Thank you very much, James, and thank you very much, Peter, for the privilege of the podium. Uh, it's a, pr a pleasure and uh, an honor to be here. Uh, that was excellent talks uh, prior to, to this one, and we have heard the importance of the screening colonoscopies and the incidence of the cancer. And next, uh, these are my disclosure. The topic was given uh, to me uh, uh, what we don't see and how we can improve uh, uh, this, uh, the, the screening uh, colonoscopies and what methods do we have. Uh, and we know that colonoscopy is certainly uh, associated with reduction in mortality. We also we heard that from Sharon very nicely. However, uh, there is 20 to 30 percent of all adenoma still missed in these screening colonoscopies, and this appears to be greater on the left side than the pro uh, than <clears throat> than the proximal side. So we got to do uh, things to improve the detection then, and uh, th this can be uh, summarized in two. Uh, headings, the devices for mucosal exposure, devices that we can straighten out the mucosa more or straighten the folds, or imaging improvements, how uh, the visualization, enhancement of the visualization. These are the two topics that we'll be ta talking about in the next uh, 10 minutes. And the other one is the bowel preparation. There's some work done on this one as well, which I'm not going to talk about this, which is like adding uh, methylene blue or dye into the bowel preparation that can also enhance uh, adenoma detection rates. So um, for devices for mucosal exposure or to get the colon more visualized by mechanical enhancement, is we can list these uh, items here. Water exchange or underwater colonoscopy is one of them. Plastic caps or distal disposable caps that we use normally is another one that for EMRs and ESDs, they can also straighten the colon when you withdraw the scope. Endocuff, the purple one, or endoring, these are also devices that can allow to uh, have things a little bit more easier visualized and to get rid of the faults, or retrograde viewing devices, or third eye, uh, as well as increasing the viewing angle to 330 degrees field of the view. Uh, these are the, 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 the improvements that were made, but the studies didn't really uh, show or uh, prove that there's any increased rate of adenoma detection rate, even the use of these techniques or um, um, technologies. Then we are uh, left with detection, maybe with Im enhancing the images. How can we do that? There's technologies to improve that with, uh, with high definition uh, white light colonoscopy. Of course, uh, image processors this requires. Or uh, you, uh, spraying a dye, which is chromoendoscopy, and, or, or even not spraying a dye, but doing this digitally is, is also referred to as digital chromoendoscopy. Uh, and there are even further more advanced techniques like electron uh, chromoendoscopy or the fluorescence I imaging or confocal, which was the topic of this talk as well, laser endoscopy, C CLE, which is the airport code for Cleveland. So, high, so the high definition, needless to say, the, it increases uh, the, uh, the uh, pixel quality from 200,000 to 1.4 million. It's a huge increase, and this allows a high resolution image. Uh, the, we are familiar with this from our home TVs. G this helps really to increase the AD adenoma detection rates. Having said that, the studies did, were not completely successful proving that. However, uh, there are studies that showed some few uh, percentages improvement in these. Uh, certainly, a high definition colonoscopy is considered a part of modern uh, mucosal resection techniques and as well as the follow-ups. And it's a, also a significant physician satisfaction component. We all love it, and it, I think, adds uh, greatly. If we don't have it, chromoendoscopy is certainly recommended, uh, and spray dye onto the mucosal surfaces and assessing the pit pattern is how, what it is about. So indigo carmine, non-absorbable, uh, it enhances the contrast between the lesion and the mucosa. As you see in this picture, we're looking at the same lesion, same image, completely different view. So that's done with indigo carmine. The next, this slide shows done with the methylene blue, similar to the indigo carmine, but this is absorbed by normal intestinal epithelium cells, whereas the neoplastic or infl inflamed mucosa, it does not. And then these appear brighter, as you see in these images, and you can capture those. 
Then another uh, dye that is used for chroma endoscopy, this is physical again, uh, and, uh, dye spraying crystal violet. It's more commonly used for Barrett's esophagus as well as in the UC uh, ulcerative colitis surveillance colonoscopies, and it's, it's also absorbable, and it gives you detailed assessment for pit pattern. So this is a very nice meta-analysis not long ago uh, published, uh, re uh, reviewing six studies involving 12 uh, uh, 1,200 patients, and the, uh, the the proportion of dysplastic flat flat, le flat lesions increased with chroma endoscopy by 27 percent when compared with standard definition white light uh, endoscopy. So it's a really significant improvement, and also we know that scenic or international consensus statement on surveillance and management of dysplasia in IBD also recommends uh, uh, chroma endoscopy. If you using a, a standard definition, this this is not shown if you are using a high definition uh, uh, colonoscopy. So then, these were the actual physical chroma endoscopy, which we talked about uh, last few slides. But now I'm going to touch base on the digital chroma endoscopy. You can do the same endoscopic assessment without giving, or similar, without giving any actual dye. And these are NBI, FICE, eye scan, or uh, autofluorescent imaging. So NBI uses a light that filtered to increase blue light uh, and decrease red light and narrows the white light bandwidth. This enhances the tissue microvasculature from its surroundings. And as you see, then this, uh, the contrast is much more uh, enhanced, and it underscores the lesion, and you can pick it up very easily. The FICE is the uh, Fuji one. It's similar to NBI, uh, but it's a different brand, and where image is filtered with 10 pre-programmed programmed, uh, FICE filters. It is a little bit more yellow compared to uh, the NBI, but it's also uh, helpful. Eye scan is with the Pentax system. Uh, it's a little bit different technology, combines high resolution endoscopy with three adjustable modes to enhance the image. These are surface enhancement, co contrast enhancement of dep depressed areas, and tone enhancement. The next uh, digital chroma endoscopy that we will be talking about is the autofluorescence imaging or electron chroma endoscopy. This is similar to the ICG that we all, uh, as surgeons, are familiar with. And uh, light enters the colon mucosa and excites electrons. And when electrons return to baseline state, they release light. So neoplastics lesions are less autofluorescence due to the to a different tissue characteristics, and they uh, they are not that green then when you look at it. Here you can see at the ba bottom of this slide, excuse me. Uh, I don't think we have. Here you can see, oh, here. Here we can see at the bottom of the slides, uh, white light colonoscopy, autofluorescence. You know, it's a little bit more green than the other ones, and narrow band imaging and chroma endoscopy. High definition white light uh, improved detection of small adenomas. None of the digital chroma endoscopy technologies have been proven to in improve necessarily the adenoma detection rate, except uh, autofluorescence improved detection for small adenomas. As you see, it's a little bit more obvious uh, here, but the study these, again, failed to show a huge benefit of these uh, technologies. The next one is this confocal laser endomicroscopy. It was in the title, and most of you might not be familiar with. It is a, uses a laser light and visualizes both the surface and below surface, which means really the penetration is much deeper and different than what we discussed the last few slides. And this is almost, if you will, it's a, a endoscopic microscopy, and you start to do your histology before you even take the specimen. Out. So, I mean, the idea is great, and uh, I think there's more work to be done on this, but this is really a promising technology. It provides thousand-fold magnification, and there are two systems. Either it can go through the endoscopy channel, endoscope, uh, like a probe-based, number two, or endoscope integrated, it comes with the scope itself. 
So here we're looking at some of images just for um, yeah, for sampling pur purposes. Normal crypts are round and coated with regular layers of goblet cells containing dark mucin in an epithelial op optical section that runs parallel to the tissue surface. It's all nice and uh, uh, regular pattern. Hyperplastics are a little bit different. The crypts openings are is typically start shaped and goblet cells are present in large numbers. And, and this is obviously neoplasia. It, the crypts are more irregular, thicker wall, uh, and the height m may vary. And all glandular epithelium is still contained by the clear-cut basal membrane. On this one, there's no invasion and no infiltration into the lamina propria, whereas, of course, you could potentially even uh, diagnose and assess invasiveness cancer with this as well. There are some limitations with this, unfortunately, at, at least for now, high cost uh, of the endoscope scopes of probes need contrast such as IV fluorescein and additional procedure time and you can really only examine certain areas. It's very hard to apply uh, overall col uh, colon. I, this wasn't necessarily the topic but also wanted to touch base on like for a few slides with artificial intelligence. It's a real time assessment. It's really interesting concept. It's not in the clinical cases used yet but there's work being done from Canada as well and it's a deep convolutional neural network, which I think means uh, um, teaching the computer or machine how to read things and uh, come up with an idea. And so it's pre-given images are given and the convolution layers are put in, subsampling, and then the system, the program, the algorithm comes up with a model prediction, type 1, type 2, or unsuitable, or no polyp. So it's really a great concept. As you see, you can get a, like, really, uh, like, with... Uh, probability percentages, ty what type of a polyp it is, and get a result like this on the screen. Doesn't that sound good? So the other, the last slide is, you know, we, we now currently look at the Paris classification, Sano, Kudo, and Nice, and from surface anatomy, trying to determine if there's an invasion or not. So obviously, all these chromoendoscopic techniques can also help us to, uh, to differentiate, and when we use the Kudo type 5, if more uh, pro pro probable to have an invasive uh, uh, pattern, so it is important to use these chromoendoscopies, so these are adjunct to our practice and we as surgeons should be familiar with this technologies which at the moment I don't think we are very much uh, compared to gastroenterologists. So in conclusion, the continued technological advancements in colonoscopy and endoscopic imaging would result in improvements in the quality of, endos of colonoscopy and what we can see. Thank you very much for your attention.